And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ansley Sutter, Social Media Training and Communications Coordinator with Brent Media Solutions and Homes.com. So happy to be here. So glad that you guys are here today. You could have been on the road on your way to the Memorial Day vacation, and guess what? Maybe some of you are. <laughs> but either way, I will take it. So glad that you're here. We are going to be talking about cultivating connection. And in order to cultivate connection, what better way to do that than with a Twitter chat? And we are using hashtag RE social chat. So if any of you guys are on Twitter right now, please utilize that hashtag. If you use the hashtag during today's Twitter chat, you might be the one person that wins a $20 gift card. How great would that be to kick off your weekend, right? would love for you guys to win that gift card. So whoever is utilizing this hashtag and interacting with us on the Twitter chat, we would love to send you that $20 gift card. So keeping in line with today's theme, how we're cultivating connection, uh, we will touch on ways that you can plant seeds of information to jumpstart a connection between you and your target audience. We're going to be talking about how you can nurture your leads. That's very important for new business, as well as strengthening that bond with current brand advocates. We'll wrap things up with some tips to help you tend to your garden or, or your network of prospects and clients. And then we'll close with a few links that may be helpful for you to kind of kick off this whole cultivating connection trend. And as always, I welcome your questions. I can see them come in in real time. So please don't hesitate to ask away and just share your feedback through the questions box with GoToWebinar today. So at its most basic level, all gardening starts with planting a seed, right? Even those of us that don't have a green thumb, we always tend to just kill every single plant that we try to plant. You know, when, when the season, the holiday seasons come and friends and family members are giving you those poinsettias, you're just like, well, this is going to be a great few days and then it's going to die, right? You just, you're just not a good gardener. It's not so much the seed that has to do with doing all the work, but more so the foundation in which it's planted. So in social media, any other, in any other industry for that, successful professionals understand that there's a reason why people do what they do in social media. There's a reason why we're on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and YouTube and, and everything else. Sure, social media is evolving at an exponential rate. That's why we have trainings like this to help us keep up with, with the times. But that's not what drives us to use it. It's not the fast pace. It's not necessarily the technology either, even though those are some great things that are just really pique our interest. The, the main component of why we use social media is because we crave connection. We crave instant gratification, and we look for a place to belong. And social media fulfills all that and so much more. So when you realize that our basic instinct is to satisfy our sense of belonging and it's really to be part of a community, you will be able to direct your marketing efforts to fill those needs. Remember, we've spoken about in the past Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and a lot of those are trust, relationship building, sense of community, and social media almost gives us that pseudo sort of family, and for a lot of people, people connect more with their social media friends more so than they do with, with their in-person and real-life friends, which is, you know, not surprising these days. So when you plant a seed or invest your time in a lead or a prospect, you don't expect results overnight, right? I mean, maybe if you're new to the industry and you're just so excited, but really a seasoned veteran in the real estate space, whether it be multifamily or uh real estate is going to understand that it takes time. You have to plant that seed. So instead, you water that seed and you nurture that relationship to give you a larger window of opportunity to close the deal when the time does come. 
We recently hosted a webinar with social media pioneer Gary Vaynerchuk, or Gary V, as most of you know him. We had this uh, session, I believe it was last week or two weeks ago, uh, co-branded with Homes.com and ForRent.com. And if you're a part of the Secrets of Top Selling Agents webinars, you said on that session, it was amazing. So if there's one person who has kind of been there and done that, it's definitely Gary. And he provided some great insight as to why brands are not generating new business and why there's such a disconnect between brands and consumers. And he made a point that the reason brands aren't seeing an increase in engagement is because they're coming right out of the gate with their handout <laughs> asking for business. And that turns a consumer off. So he shared some simple solutions to this issue with his book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. And hopefully any of you guys sitting on the webinar, if you sat on the uh, Secrets of Top Selling Agents webinar, you may have received that book because they gave a ton of them away during the session. But bridging that gap and driving that engagement starts a startup with brands that can really get out, it starts with brands that can get out of their own way and offer solutions to information and support before they ask for business. And in this way, this the way they would be conveyed on you know social channels is maybe you sharing really informative information of the state of the market in your local area to better inform your buyers and sellers if you're on the real estate side. This would be you sharing tips on maximizing your square footage for your residents if you're on if you're a property manager so no matter what side of the housing industry you're on real estate or multifamily your goal with your social strategy should always be customer ser customer service consumer driven service which online is going to translate to providing help and useful information before anything else. Gary says, offer a solution, share information, provide support, then ask for business. That's really how it should be. So a while back, we were lucky enough to have another great social expert, Jay Bear, uh, who is in social media and marketing, a really great thought leader who came to our home office here in Norfolk to share his stance on how you as an individual and you as part of a brand can make yourself an in-demand commodity. So he calls this utility, and utility is marketing so useful, people actually want to pay for it, so you're not giving it away for free. You're doing such a good job of offering free, open communication and information so that when it's time for them to utilize the service that you're trained for and that you've gone to school for or that you've honed that craft, your utility is in demand. Utility is marketing so useful, again, people would want to pay for it. Imagine that. How easy would it be for, how easy would it be, and it would be so great at what you could do, if you were so great at what you could do, that people are clamoring to use you as their agent, or people are clamoring to live at your community. It's a whole lot easier than having to tell them how great you are, that's definitely for sure. Hashtag work smarter, hashtag RE social chat, right? Hashtag work smarter, not harder. That's what this is all about. He wrote a book on this topic, actually, that's a really great read called Utility. Uh, if you haven't read it before, please get the chance. It's great. It's, it's not a long book, so it's an easy read. You could definitely read it while you're on the beach this Memorial Day weekend. But the difference between helping and selling is just two letters is a term that he's been quoted by saying. So I hope a light bulb that just came on for you. The difference between helping and selling is just two letters. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as offering help, whether it be in the form of news and weather updates for your residents or a forecast of the real estate market for your clients. Maybe you could share some great blog posts with DIY home decor tips. Um, you know, the possibilities are endless here. So some, taking some great tidbits from Jay Bear and Gary Vaynerchuk, two guys who really know what they're talking about. They've been here since the emergence of social media. They kind of got it before everyone else got it. So these are some great tidbits to take away. 
Here's my case in point taking away the tips from Jay Bear and Gary Vaynerchuk. Many people who are in the market to buy a pool have a really hard time finding information to help them make a purchase, believe it or not. So Marcus Sheridan of River Pools and Spas capitalized on that void and created a blog solely based and focused on informing readers about fiberglass pools. Talk about a niche market here. So he outlined all of the many categories of pools and related products that a pool buyer needed to consider along with their price ranges uh, over the expected life of owning the pool. His list included maybe some products that his company didn't even sell. So he's informing his consumer and not trying to keep all the business on his side. He's sharing information that may lead them to another service provider or another vendor. But that's not what he's about. He was about informing so that this information built his credibility and provided context for a better informed decision. So it also changed the price decision from a first cost in one year to the total cost over a number of years. So this really worked for him and it worked so much that he gained two million dollars in revenue all because of the useful information from his blog. So again, when you're looking to capture new business, when you're looking to create connection and generate uh, traffic from leads, don't think that, okay, well, if I, if I send this information about, you know, this home that's for sale or, you know, this neighborhood that might lead them to another agent, I'm going to lose the business because that's not always the case. If you inform your prospect of just anything that will help them make a better purchase decision, more than likely they're still going to make that purchase decision with you. So again, when you position yourself as a fixer, as a helper, as a problem solver, you're going to be the same person that prospect runs to when, you're, when they're in the market to find a new place to live, whether it be on the rental side or the buying side. So with tips and tricks you've shared on Facebook, on your Facebook business page, or maybe you're pinning great uh, tips for downsizing your home for empty nesters on your Pinterest page. When you share information, even if it's information that doesn't come from you, but you give it credit to the originating source, you are in turn creating and establishing yourself as a source of information and credibility. And that's going to work for you and not against you. Again, work smarter, not harder. These are some examples of content you should be sharing if you're in the real estate space. And if you're not quite sure of where to get this content from, you can visit um, the Connect Homes blog. You can visit the For Rent blog. There are so many assets that we have for you that other places, Apartment Therapy, Ecosimplista, Howls.com, those aren't linking to For Rent or Homes, but these are all great sources that will help you get great content to share on your pages. And again, make sure you're targeting every demographic, especially if you're starting out maybe in the real estate space or even in the multifamily space and you're not quite sure the type of uh, audience that you are catering to, make sure you're hitting every single demographic until you've found that niche group that responds best to you. Maybe you, uh, if you're on the real estate side and you're an agent, maybe you cater to relocation cases. Maybe you work strictly with military families who are relocating. Maybe you are working with a clientele that's strictly going to be people that are empty nesters and they're downsizing. Again, you can focus on your niche group once you start to realize who that is. So for you multifamily industry folks, you'll find a plethora of information and in blogs full of great ideas your apartment dwelling clients can implement and appreciate. So blog.forrent.com is composed of consumer facing info that we invite you to repurpose when you're looking to share real time relevant content. So again, we don't write this type of content for it to just kind of dissolve into the social, the social black, black abyss, right? We create this content for clients that we value like you that say, okay, we want to share great content, great tips for our apartment clients and our apartment dwellers. 
but we're not quite sure where to start. Well, you can go to blogs like ours to help you keep your residents informed and repurpose that content. So with social media, it's not like the movie Field of Dreams. It's not if you build it, they will come. It's more of if you set up a Facebook page or Twitter account or even Instagram account, people are not going to flock to your account in droves just because you've set yourself up on any of these sites. That's not the case because people are doing it every day as we speak. You have to give them a reason to engage. So when a prospect encounters your brand, the first thing they are going to do is ask themselves, what's in it for me? You have to ask them to engage. So why does, they're probably asking themselves, why does this person deserve the commission when I buy or sell my home? Will the property manager at this community actually do what they say they're going to do? This is what we call the WIFM factor. So the only way to prove you're a brand that delivers is, guess what, by delivering. And with the leads coming from sources like online form submissions or you might have leads coming from phone calls using a tracking number, word of mouth is still one of the number one business generators to date. So make sure you're practicing what you preach and you those referrals keep rolling in because those are going to be one of the you know main things that affects your bottom line and either you know increases it or decreases it depending on the customer service and the connection that you have with your clients. I see some of you guys using the hashtag RE social chat. I'm loving what I'm seeing. I see Debbie said light bulb. Glad the light bulb. Glad you caught that aha moment for you, Debbie. Loving what I'm seeing. Uh, Jessica Johnson, thank you so much. Uh, Michelle Hoffman, thank you for joining. Ronnie, great to have you. Hey, Mike, talked to you the other day. Thank you guys so much for being on this Twitter chat. We love the engagement and the interaction. Alrighty, moving right along. Once you've planted your seeds of help and useful information, you have to nurture and take care of those leads that you have since there's that high possibility to convert them, that person or that lead to a home buyer or seller. The best way to find a happy medium where you're not bombarding your prospects and steering them away but you're also not out of touch is by implementing a 30, 60, 90 day outreach plan. Um, so this is where you're going to set up your markers on your calendar to kind of ping and get in touch with prospects and current clients based on where they are. So one thing that you can do for your 30 day marker is you're going to reach out to prospects via email, include links to your social channels in the email signature. That just allows them to be a little bit more connected with your brand. That is going to allow them that if they do have a complaint or if they do have a concern or something, a feedback they even want to share, that if they choose not to call your phone number or shoot you an email, since they're now following you on Facebook, they can actually send you a private Facebook message and you can handle that issue offline or behind the scenes. Another great plan is for 60 days, send new clients or residents a handwritten letter. How intimate and how you know, uh, personalized is that? Offer assistance should it be needed. Listen, even if there is no void to be filled, let them know that you're still there in the case it arises. Even if there's no issue that needs to be solved, let them know that you're happy to help. Don't wait for people to say, I need help. Offer help before that time so that they're not making such a big fuss when the time does come for them to ask for help. Again, a 90-day plan is to ask new clients or your residents to leave a review of you or your community on Yelp or Google Plus or Yahoo Local or even Bing Local. These are going to be the four big places people are going to leave reviews of a brand in the social space right now. So make sure you're number one established and you're found and accurate. If any of you guys are for rent clients, you know that we offer a reputation management which is going to essentially serve all of the places you are found and accurate 
online. It's going to help with your social listening. It's going to help with your social presence. For you homes clients, you have Reputation Manager. It's going to do the same thing. It's just going to show you how uh, present and accurate you are in the social space. So if you are interested in learning more about reputation management or reputation manager, please feel free to get in touch with your home's uh, representative or your for rent representative and they are so happy to give you more information about that. But a great, a great thing is a 60, 90, 30, 60, 90 day plan. And again, we had a question from Jonathan, who came up with the 30, 60, 90 day plan? Listen, it's, it's something that a lot of businesses are doing. There's no kind of like template for it. It's really about just putting markers in your calendar and saying, okay, at this time, I need to reach this group of people before they fall off. The great thing about this is that you can catch people where they are based on their maturity with your brand. The newer clients or the newer prospects that you would like to be a client or a resident, make sure that you attend to them. But again, when you have current clients, make sure you reach out to them too. Let them know that you still appreciate their business. Don't let them drop off just because you've got their you've earned their business. You want to keep the business and especially for you real estate folks if you help someone buy or sell a home even a year ago, send them an anniversary note saying happy one year uh, for selling your home or happy one year for buying your home. Hope you're settling, settling in well. That's going to remind them how great it was to work with you and guess what? You're going to have referrals coming through the door that way. Question from Cooper, is the 30, 60, 90 day plan becoming more popular? So I think it is just because it allows you to pace yourself, especially if you're you know, starting with social media or you're just marketing in general or you're just a busy person. A 30, 60, 90 day plan is going to allow you to physically see kind of where on your calendar you need to reach out to these people. Because the great thing is like if you've made connection with them, say you've cultivated connection with the lead, if you don't remind yourself, I mean I know myself, I have to put markers in my calendar to reach out to certain people because I'll forget. And the same thing goes with a busy agent or a busy property manager. So I think a 30, 60, 90 day plan is just helpful. It allows you to, again, pace yourself and it doesn't, uh, it, it allows you to not uh, let things fall through, the fall through the cracks as far as reaching out to people. Another great way to water your leads or to kind of keep them growing into so that they can grow into uh, a client or a resident is to keep your prospect and residents informed without overwhelming them. And one great way that you can do that is with a uh, for instance, text to resident and text to prospect pro program. And this is something that for rent offers and this program is where there's no opt-in, so only there's only opt-out. So you're not having to wait for your contacts to volunteer their information. If you have it, you can go ahead and, and text in them a text. And we're seeing that the time at the time people are opening texts. We're still seeing stats that show people will avoid opening emails but almost 100% of the time they're going to open their text messages. So because people are more mobile, that's just how we are nowadays. People are on the go. They're using their phones for more business and pleasure than just pleasure and entertainment. So if this is something you'd like to look into, you can definitely get in touch with your for rent rep and he or she will be more than happy to talk about ways you can implement this uh, text a resident, text a prospect program into your current marketing mix. So let's move from watering your leads to growing engagement and growing these leads from leads to actual clients and prospects. And we're going to talk about ways you can do that using platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. With Facebook, people are spending most of their time here to maintain and build bonds between friends and family as well as, you know, they're going to source for information um, and, ga and engage with brands they're loyal to. So this presents a great, great opportunity to, for you to infiltrate that user behavior and connection in a place where people 
are already engaging with peers and brands. So this is an example of how different real estate agents are injecting information on their Facebook timeline and sharing it with their network. So as a result, their base or following can comment, like, and or share this information this information and this content to their friends and family. So the scope of reach can cast a wider net with social media. So you're seeing here, these are just some screenshots I took in the last couple days. An agent is uh, sharing a blog post that he wrote. And the cool thing is that with Facebook, you see that hashtags can be utilized with Facebook content, which is great. It's going to give your content a longer shelf life. Real estate is an extremely popular hashtag. So make sure that when you are sharing content on all these networks, you're utilizing the hashtag real estate and then you're, infil you're injecting some more hyper local terms. Dana Matthews who's in the Bay Area said what's your reason in 2014? This is a really cute little infograph that kind of shows how sellers are feeling good about home prices this year. So if you're looking to motivate your buyer to say, okay, it's, it's time to pull the trigger, that this is a great infograph to share. Another great thing with uh, Realty Associates, they're sharing photos of different open houses that are happening, and they're, they're injecting some terms of immediacy, must see, stunning, classic home. Again, these are just some great ways that you can grow engagement with Facebook if you're using Facebook for real estate. Same goes for the property management side. You can share posts that humanize your brand. And by the way, I have a great blog post coming your way that suggests things you can do to add the human touch to your marketing. So you should be on the lookout for that. But what you see here are posts that touch on resident appreciation. You see we have a Mother's Day post. We have a post from RAM Partners um, from their property, the reserve at Johnson City, is sharing uh, their number one client. Their number one resident. So they literally just built uh, their property and they uh, actually secured their first lease at this brand new property. So these are some great kind of examples of how you can grow engagement with Facebook. Another one that the reserve that Johnson City shared is their, their new coffee bar. Who needs Starbucks? Not our residents. <laughs> the coffee bar will be available to all residents at the reserve sit, relax, and enjoy a nice cup of, cup of coffee at our clubhouse. So what doesn't, what, I mean, how great could this be when you implement things like this to really make your residents feel exclusive, feel that exclusivity, convey that lifestyle of high-end luxury? These are going to be great things that you can share. So we're seeing people uh, come to Pinterest for idea gathering, and we're, they're also not only gathering ideas, but they're kind of planning for their future. A lot of folks are staging for their new house or for their, for their future house. So Pinterest is going to be great for you to use when you're wanting to build engagement and paint a picture or convey a certain lifestyle. Also, Pinterest is great for jumping on trends. Once huge, one huge trend is brands going in a more green and eco-friendly direction. It's true. People will jump behind a cause before they even support the brand that's behind that cause. So if your brand can support maybe a certain kind of cause or campaign, maybe you can promote these themes via pins on Pinterest. It's going to, again, chip away at the colder, more corporate side of your brand. And using Pinterest for this purpose is going to reveal the humanized side of your brain and it's, and it's also going to give you ideas of how your property, if you're on, if you're on the uh, property management side, is, can go more green and, and cut costs. Instagram. Instagram is extremely visual, so this is going to allow you to share real-time, behind-the-scenes content. 
So this is an example of a super social savvy property management firm, Bazudo. I'm sure I'm sure any of you guys on the property management side have have seen Jamie Gorski speak at events. You've seen Sashi speak at events. I mean, they're really uh, I lo I love to say they're really killing it with social media right now. And and one of their properties hosts a rooftop yoga class, and they use Instagram to promote this event. So events like these are going to be a great change of pace when you're making the experience less about your brand and more about your residents. So in turn, the hope is that your residents will go and talk about exclusive events like these to their friends and their peers. That's really, you know, it's not the primary result. You know, you really want your residents and your clients to feel like they could, you know, live at your community forever. And, and that's the kind of lifestyle that you'd like to convey. But a secondary uh, aim and goal is to really have them kind of talk and, and, and create a buzz about it. So we actually have a blog post on how you can start a yoga group at your community. Uh, so I will share that link with you too in just a few so you can have the two blog posts on humanizing your brand as well as starting a yoga, a yoga club at your community. Another great way to cultivate connection with Instagram is with a mixture of events and holidays and trends. You see here again, Bazudo injects brand love with custom hashtags and contests. Uh, they answer the call to action to social responsibility with hosting this whole uh, Earth Month campaign, Forward Your Fashion Festival. So they're uh, using really great social responsibility and injecting it into their marketing strategy. Um, they had a clothes drive that really helped people at all of their communities donate their clothes. And then they actually had a huge party at the end of this Earth Month campaign, which celebrated their residents, which is great. Um, you know, they created a month-long campaign in celebration of their 25th anniversary here and used a branded custom hashtag, Bazudo25, for that campaign. And guess what? They can repurpose all this content that they have had their residents and their employees and anyone else that just loves Bazudo. They can repurpose this content and use it for future events and campaigns. Um, another great thing. A popular holiday, Bazudo Moms. So for Mother's Day, they got all of their their great hardworking moms together um, on Mother's Day and used a branded custom hashtag for that. So there's a lot of room for you multifamily folks to in, to implement some out of the box tactics to share experiences with your audience. We had a, a chat from Ronnie that said Instagram has been crazy growing recently. You couldn't have said it better, Ronnie. I mean, Instagram is really blowing up. And the cool thing is that people are finding, especially brands and marketers, are finding great ways to utilize Instagram to really heighten recognition for their brand, but also connect and cultivate engagement with people that really follow their brand on, on Instagram. And another cool thing with Instagram is not only is Instagram just great in general and it, and it serves a great real-time uh, purpose, it's, it's really going to be great for repurposing content. So it's just great altogether. So here are some examples for the real estate folks out there. The same goes for real estate. You see here that we have agents taking a photo of their business card and sharing that contact info information as an Instagram share with hashtags to give them a larger reach for prospecting. I mean, who would have thought? This person actually created a, a cute little graphic of her headshot. Listen, with real estate, it's all about the headshot, right? <laughs> Their, her contact information. And she said she's always connected. Facebook, and um, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. How great is that? This guy, Adam, took it upon himself to take a photo of his business card. I mean, guys, think outside of the box with real estate. That's what it's all about. Real estate has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's not going away. But we're always having to think of ways to kind of reinvent the wheel with real estate. And these are some great examples. Uh, inventory updates are a super clever and smart way to keep up with both prospects and clients, keep them up to speed with your listings. Um, general industry humor 
Real estate agents need closure, ain't that the truth? These are going to be great things that humanizes your brand. Home buying season is upon us, that's so true. So, you know, these are going to be great things that humanize your brand. And also, another great thing is kind of industry terms and education. I just purchased my very first house two weeks ago. And I can tell you that when I sat at the closing table, I was so inundated with all of these huge words. Had I not done my research and just kind of sourced what, you know, closing costs entail, what, uh, what um, contingency means, what a short sale really actually means, those are going, thank you, Cooper. <laughs> those are going, he said, congrats on buying my first home. Thank you. Um, these are going to be great things that will help not only you build brand recognition, but listen, people are sourcing information all kinds of ways these days. So what if you, as a real estate agent, took it upon yourself to do a word of the week, right? Do a real estate term of the week, and you just created a super easy uh, graphic that said, what is a short sale? Or uh, what is a contingency? Or even what is an addendum? These are things that people, like everyday people, believe it or not, don't know until it t comes time for them to buy a home or sell a home. So if you did a word of the week in, just in, in the description of your Instagram share, just copy and paste the definition from you know, Webster's Dictionary and, and use hashtags to really bring light to that, to that Instagram share. You, again, are setting yourself up as the informational hub. You're setting yourself up as an expert in the industry. And you're also informing people that may not even need business or want your business right now, but when the time comes, you're that person that they're going to. So in closing, I have just a few tips to help you tend to your garden of prospects and clients. I'm loving what I'm seeing, by the way, on the Twitter chat, so keep it coming, folks. So these are just some really easy ways that you can tend to your garden and, and grow your network. So the first thing is always make room for prospects. That's number one. Always make room for prospects because guess what? Prospects bring in new business. But make the loyal resident and your client base a priority as well because those are the folks that are going to keep people, they may keep coming back like if they are buying or selling for the third or fourth time. Sometimes people just know who they're working with and they, they don't want to change their agent and they want to keep coming back to you. So make sure you keep that tie close because they may keep using you every time they buy or sell. The same goes with the same people who are constantly using you. They may say, oh, you have to work with Adam or you have to work with Cooper because he's great. So make sure you are constantly keeping in touch with your client base as well as your prospects because they're going to be important for new business. Another great point is become the expert in your local market. You'll connect on a more intimate level, creating more intimate ties, and that's so true. If you are an agent that really focuses on really, uh, you know, the if you're if, okay. So I'm from I'm I'm from Atlanta, so I know the Atlanta market pretty well. So if you're an agent in the Metro Atlanta area, and Atlanta is broken up with Buckhead downtown, Midtown, West Midtown, um, Decatur, you know, all these different little kind of neighborhoods within little neighborhoods, make sure that you are highlighting your knowledge on not only the metro market in your city, but then you're breaking, breaking it down to the kind of little niche markets and neighborhoods because guess what? So for example, the old fourth ward in Atlanta was pretty much, I mean, run down. Now it's an up-and-coming neighborhood. It's almost like this whole um, gentrific gentrification, if I can say that correctly, and kind of renewing the neighborhood and, and all these great uh, things are happening in that neighborhood. Make sure your prospects and your residents and, and, your, and your clients know that you know about the local market so that way they're wanting to stay tied to you because you're always the first to know that information. And, and when you get more on a local basis, you're going to uh, lessen, you're going to, you know, cast a more specific net. Not, not necessarily smaller, but you're going to cast a more specific 
uh, relevant net. And then lastly, share, support, and solve. Remember what Gary Vaynerchuk and Jay Bear said. Make sure you're sharing information that's useful so that you're making yourself a utility and you're making yourself an in-demand commodity when it comes time to ask for business. We had a question come in from Carol, do you prefer it simple or does it feel more like a two-way conversation? So I'm, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, Carol, but I do feel like what you're saying is when you are, you know, connecting with your prospects and your clients, I would definitely say that try to make it as simple as possible. We talked a couple months ago about making your communication to them bite-sized pieces of information. So that's going to be content that's easy for them to digest. Whether whether it be a simple uh, paragraph on the local market via email, or whether it be a short and sweet blog post, um, whether it be um, you know a tweet within 140 characters, make sure you're still sharing content uh, that's going to be really easy for them to digest, so that there, there is a two-way conversation going to take place. Last but not least, it's all about the connection. That's really what we are talking about today is how you can cultivate connection using simple things and implementing really easy to implement ideas with social media. A brand is worthless if it doesn't connect with the right audiences in a relevant way. So you could be tweeting and Instagramming and sharing content on Pinterest out the wazoo. But the thing of the, the fact of the matter is if you're not sharing information that's actually useful, um, you're not going to gain any type of traction. There's not going to be any reciprocation on your end. So make sure that it's not about, it's not about quantity of information that you're sharing, it's about quality of useful information that you're sharing. So I have some uh, links that I'd like to t uh, share out to you right now. I'm going to share this slide with you, but right now I'm going to actually uh, chat them to you via the uh, GoToWebinar panel. So you should have those uh, right now. I just sent them to you guys that are on the webinar. Um, and, and yes, to answer your question, I, I feel like someone asked a question about if I'm sending this out as a follow-up. Yes, t Tiffany, I am going to be sending out this presentation to you as a follow-up. So um, don't worry if you don't have a chance to take down these links. Uh, you will be getting those via email in the next few days after the holiday. So. Uh, please rest assured that you will be getting this information. But these are some links that I think will help you out. This was a great uh, blog post from Heidi Cohen that kind of, she's, she's the one who kind of uh, directed me to the um, Sheridan, the, the guy who uh, is the owner of the fiberglass pool company who generated $2 million in sharing information, useful information. Secondly, we have connect by giving your brand a human touch. This is going to be the blog post that really helps you find ways to better humanize your brand. And last but not least, we have this great blog post uh, that shares ways you can start a yoga club that you saw that Bazudo did that you can implement at your property. So at this time, thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan's computer is about to die, so he's going to head out. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. I, I, I answered a few questions along the way, but I'm actually going to uh, scan the Twitter chat really quickly to see if we have any questions. Um, we had a question that you're wondering, retreat at Union Square, wondering how many apartment communities utilize Instagram. You'd be so surprised as to how many properties are utilizing Instagram. Number one, you have to make sure it's within your bandwidth. That means if, if, you, if it's within your job scope and, and you are um, able to do that, I would definitely suggest utilizing Instagram. I've seen some properties uh, utilize Instagram when they want to get up close and share the new hardwoods that went down in the units or sharing the granite countertops and the stainless steel appliances that come when you lease an apartment uh, home at so-and-so at community. Um, I've seen people share great images of their new pool or their uh, clubhouse. Listen, if you, whether you're an A property all the way down, you can find something that really helps you sell your self and sell your community with Instagram. So that's a great question. Thank you for that. Any other questions? I'm happy to answer any questions that um, you may have. 
I'm scanning the Twitter chat here. Thank you, Jessica. Add the human touch to your marketing. So, so true. Uh, Kelly asked, is there research to support a positive versus negative brand reaction to getting texts? So I believe, Kelly, um, I believe we have done a survey. Uh, we've surveyed and asked questions, posed questions to folks um, to see how well received getting text messages were. So if I can find that, Kelly, I will be sure to uh, send it your way. That's a great, great question. Any other questions that we may have before we close? I want to get you out and uh, before the hour's over, so that you can head out to your uh, vacation if you're leaving early for Memorial Day weekend. Um, other than that, if you don't have any questions, uh, you're free to go. I appreciate your time. Here are some sources. But again, you'll be getting all of this information via follow-up email after the holiday next week. So be on the lookout for that. But on behalf of Homes.com and ForRent.com, I appreciate your time, everyone. Have a safe holiday travel uh, safely and have a great day. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care.